question. When it came to converting coordinates, rectangular to polar, polar to rectangular, which way is it easier to go? Is it easier to go from rectangular to polar or polar to rectangular? Rectangular to polar. See, I think it's easier to go from polar to rectangular because you just got to do the r cosine theta, r sine theta. You don't have to worry about the squaring and taking the square root and doing the inverse tangent. I think it's, personally, I think it's easier to go from polar to rectangular. But anyways, that's a matter of opinion. <clears throat> so to me, that's the interesting thing. When it comes to converting equations, I think it's easier to go from rectangular equations to polar equations, okay? So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to start with a rectangular equation and we're going to write it in polar form. Um, so keep in mind, you got to get rid of any x's and y's. Your variables are r and theta in polar equations, and we're typically going to solve them for r if possible, okay? So we're going to substitute using those relationships that we learned yesterday. So, um, the relationship that x is equal to r cosine theta, we're going to use that one, and we're going to use that y is equal to r sine of theta, we're going to use those two relationships. Alright, so if we start with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 5. Now question, what kind of graph does that equation right there produce? Linear? Right. It's got a squared in it. Oh, yeah, parabola. It's not a parabola. Double parabola. Y'all know this? X squared plus Y squared. Give it, well, doesn't have a cube in it. Y'all are shooting in the dark. X squared plus Y squared. You're kind of getting there with the quadratic. A circle? Yeah, that one. Y'all remember that at all? Oh. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared? No. Math 2, math 3, no? no. no. Okay, good to know. All right, X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared is a circle. Just FYI. Okay, so that's a circle. So let's see what a circle looks like in polar form. <clears throat> so we are going to substitute for our x, we are going to substitute r cosine of theta. Now x was squared. Notice how I put this in parentheses. y is equal to r sine of theta. It was also squared. 5 is just a constant. We don't touch it. Okay. <clears throat> now, bless you. When you have a product that is squared, you square both pieces. So r cosine theta squared is equal to r squared times cosine squared of theta. Same thing with the r sine of theta. That's equal to r squared sine squared of theta. Now, our goal here is to solve this for r. Our goal is to solve this for r. So if we're trying to solve for r, we need to get r by itself. Well, both of these terms have r squared. So how about we factor out the r squared. And I'm going to flip the order here so that this is something that you should hopefully recognize at this point. Yes. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, our Pythagorean identity. So... And what we're looking at is just r squared is equal to 5. And our last step, we solve for r, so we need to take the square root. So r is equal to the square root of 5. <clears throat> okay? Now, so let's think about this. r equals the square root of 5. If we think about our polar kind of thing... Um, remember, the polar coordinate system has all those concentric circles, okay? Um, so if our equation is r equals the square root of 5, that is a circle that has a radius that is the square root of 5. This equation, x squared plus y squared equals 5, is a circle with the radius of the square root of 5. It's just rectangular form versus polar form, okay? Kind of neat. 
<coughs> All right. Uh, let's look at one that looks like this. 3x minus y is equal to 6. What type of equation or graph does this produce? Linear. Linear. Okay. Then this is a linear function. All right. <clears throat> so let's see what a linear function looks like in polar form. We're going to do the same substitution that we did. We're going to substitute our cosine of theta for x. We're going to substitute our sine of theta for y. And we keep the 6. We're solving for r. So again, we're going to do the same thing. They both have just a plain r, so we're going to factor out that r. We've got 3 cosine of theta minus the sine of theta <clears throat> is equal to 6. And then we're just going to divide by the 3 cosine theta minus sine of theta on both sides. <clears throat> And that is going to be our r. 6 over 3 cosine of theta minus the sine of theta. Why would negative 3 minus 8 minus the 3 side? Um, if the sine had a 3 with it, yes. I thought it was 3. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about 3 in front of me. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yes, um, Chase asked if that sine had a 3 right there, would we simplify it? Yes, we would. We would simplify the 6 to be the 3. How do we reduce that to 2 over cosine minus sine? So it's kind of interesting. Linear equations are typically what we consider to be the most simple equations <coughs> um, in um, our rectangular system. Linear equations are pretty simple. In polar form, they're not so nice, but the polar system is based on circular kind of things and symmetric um, kind of things, and linear functions are neither of those. Okay? They're straight lines and uh, they don't have reflective symmetry. <clears throat> okay? So um, let's practice with just that. So on your worksheets, I want you to look at 